All right, now it's time to turn our attention into one of the longest sections in the whole course. Not in terms of difficulty, but just in terms of tediousness. We're going to be spending a lot of time in Excel trying to get things to work right. But again, it's critical stuff to know how to do. Um, and you're going to find that what we worked with in 2.1, let me remind you, was qualitative data, i.e. categories like M&M colors and stuff like that. And remember that M&M colors is really just a metaphor for whatever you, you're interested in gathering. I mean, race, gender, ethnicity. There are a lot of times we will gather information about people or, you know, cancers for that matter, um, that are qualitative, that are categories and qualities that they have. Excel works with qualitative data a lot easier than it works with quantitative data. We are going to be tricking Excel on a regular basis to get it to do what we want because somehow in Microsoft's imminent wisdom, they've been making this program for years and they haven't figured out how to make it work well for numbers, even though it's a number program. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to start with discrete data. We're going to organize it into tables and we're going to construct histograms of it. And then we're going to move on to continuous data, right? And remember the distinction between those two is discrete data is countable data, not necessarily finite, count for forever if you had the time, right? But it's it's countable in terms of um, if it's something that you would think of as a count, like I count the number of needles on a pine tree, right? Nobody's got that kind of time, I know, but if you did, right, that would be a countable number. So in other words, for lack of a better thing, it's kind of no decimals, right? No decimal parts to it. Everything's rounded. Um, they're there's that's kind of fuzzy definition there's a little bit more to it than that but um and actually that's not quite accurate i know if there's any stats teachers out there but but bear with me okay so first thing we're going to do is explain why this data is discrete which is just what i was just talking about so the data is discrete because it is the number of games played which is a countable value right so this player by the way these are the actual numbers right so this player has played nine games this player's played six games and so on you can't play 4.23 of a game right either you play the game or you don't right and it's not the whole game it's just saying that they've ever got up off the bench essentially right so this player has played 11 games this player plays 12 and so on okay so you're counting how many games that the the person has played i.e. it's a countable value. That's what makes it discrete. Now we're going to construct both a frequency and a relative frequency distribution below. Now for something like this with discrete numbers, there's so few of them that it's probably sensible just to take the lowest value, which was, I believe, 4. Hold on, let me make this so it's centered. 4 is the lowest one. So I'm going to put 4 here. And then we're just going to start going five, six, seven, eight. You put every value, even if there's nobody there, from your lowest to your highest. So our highest one is 12. Our lowest one is four. There's nobody at five, but that doesn't mean you can skip it. Right? You can't. So there were four players that had played four times. There's no players that have played five times. One player at six. One player at seven. Nobody at eight. One at nine. Nobody at 10. One at 11. And I think four at 12. Oh, no, but more. Two, three, four, five, six. So six at 12. Okay? So there's your frequency. And again, don't skip anybody, right? That would be, an, that wouldn't be fair, right? I mean, if, let me go back here. When I opened up that yellow, excuse me, it is yellow, but it's a yellow bag of peanut M&Ms. Just because there was no blue didn't mean that I wrote, didn't write down the blue category. I mean, blue is still a valid peanut M&M &M color right? Same thing down here. Just because nobody has played five games doesn't mean that I can't include it. Besides that, when you make your graphs, you're going to want a horizontal axis that's a number line. You can't skip numbers on the number line. You, you got to have every number. All right, now what about the relative frequency? Well, let me bring Excel back up. Oops, here it is. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here, and I won't have time to do much else, but I'm going to click on sheet number two right here. I'm going to call it um, JCC basketball. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. All right. Now we'll meet back here to find the next stuff in the next video.